Roman Griffin here with a, this tie is unruly. Roman Griffin here with a review of uh, Last Kiss by Lou Anne Rice. Lou Anne Rice, <laughs> I, I don't know what it is with modern writers, but there, there goes that tie again. Um, overuse of the colon, like, like rampantly though. This is like, like pandemic, epidemic colonemic. Uh, it, it really, I mean, oh, every goddamn time you turn around, it, it just, it totally disrupts the flow of the story. And you're probably going to say, he's going to say if there was one. There is one, but <laughs> it's about a kid, uh, what the hell is his name? I think Charles or some shit. No, it's, uh, I forget his name, man. Anyhow, he, uh, he's, he's murdered in New York City. He lives in uh, like uh, Cape Cod or some shit. And his, his the murdered boy's girlfriend hires the murdered boy's mother's ex to investigate. Now the problem is this. That's the beginning of the book. This guy comes pulling into the harbor. He's going to investigate the murder, etc., etc. And then we don't hear anything about it for a while. It's the only interesting thing in the book. And she drops it. This too many cooks spoil the soup. Too many subplots ruin a book. There's all kinds of bullshit going on. And I'm talking like in like, I got so tired of it. I bailed and I just started flipping ahead. I flipped ahead to page 56, but I stopped reading page 42. There's, we hear about this murder. We hear about this girl crying. We hear about this this, then we start hearing about the, the guy, Gavin, who comes into town. Sheridan is the woman's name whose son was murdered. Gavin and Sheridan had a thing going on when they were younger. Uh, then we start hearing about their past. Then we start hearing about Sheridan and her, her, uh, how her ancestors were witches. And, and, and I, I mean, we hear about everything but a story. And we start hearing about all this shit. And like the first, what was it? The first... Uh, I'm such a whiner today. In the first, like, seven pages, you're introduced to about 12 characters. It's a little bit overdone, man. You know, give the reader a break. Just do it gradually. I mean, there's no reason to, to introduce everybody. I mean, it's not a one-act, I mean, one-act play. I mean, we have, this, this is done in chapters. Like, use some craft. Imagine that. Learn how to write. Woo! Can't do that now, could you? God forbid. Uh, well, here's like here's here's some of the the fantastic writing. How she just paints a picture. Listen to this. I've never heard or even thought about of a cemetery. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a cemetery described this way. The cemetery was quiet, as opposed to the cemeteries with the marching bands and the rock concerts and all that kind of shit going on in them. That's an annoying cemetery. This cemetery was quiet, unlike all those others. Here's, here's Class A shit part two. And it was filled with graves. Whoo, my God, a cemetery that's quiet and filled with graves. Wow. This woman can paint a picture with words. Mm. Where's my, where's my, Where's my computer? Uh, is there a Lou Anne Rice fan club? I sure hope so. Page 21. You were part of the old crowd, she said, and it wasn't a question. No. Well, I would say the lack of the question mark, whew, I'm going to jump to that conclusion. Huh? You can't write, he said, and it wasn't a question. Oh, here's a good one, too. She was the, pic the picture. Uh, uh, uh. She was the picture of calm, except for the tears that had begun to stream down her face. The except for the tears, she was a picture of calm. He 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 crawled out of the wreckage unscathed, except for his right arm barely hanging on by a thread. Right. Here's a good one too. Painting the picture once again. So Gavin limped back to the rock ledge in her yard, sat down, and stared at the lightless windows of the dark house. Dark house with lightless windows. We have quiet cemeteries with graves. Dark houses with no lights on. Woo! 
Woo! Lou Anne Rice. Oh, I think I'm in love. Here's, uh, I've never seen it. I don't think I've seen the colon used in dialogue before. Uh, like I said, colon, bliff. Let me guess, colon, she reads his email. <laughs> oh, here's a good sentence. She knew he was worried about her since Charlie, his wife, Nell's mother, had died. His wife's name was Charlie? I, I don't understand that sentence whatsoever. You may have to just, it'll be in the email, so check it out there. Oh, here's a good one. I blame Nora Roberts for not using dialogue tags. Here's the opposite of not using dialogue tags. Maybe she'll change her mind, Nell said. I have to be ready for the fact she probably won't, he said. Well, have hope, Nell said. I'd say the same to you, her father said. You got the Dick and Jane effect going on there. Anyhow, uh, the story, too many subplots, too much bullshit. I mean, like, she tries to be literary, I guess, by telling us about quiet cemeteries with graves in them, but second time I did that today. It ain't working. Uh, it ain't working. Listen to me. <laughs> it ain't working. Uh, yeah, give it a miss. Save your money, save your time. Go see a movie, even though they suck too. Uh, thank you for listening, and uh, I'll be back in touch soon.